Hey guys, Richard Holder here. You know the only thing better than a stock 365 horse, 327 small block? A modified one that makes 100 more horsepower. Let's check it out. In this video, we're gonna start off with the world famous L76 365 horse, 327. You know the one, 11 to one, fuely heads, Duntoff cam and high rise dual plane intake manifold. It has everything that it needs, except that it doesn't. We're going to show you how to make that thing even better with a modern camshaft and aftermarket aluminum heads. And not one, but two different induction systems. So, how much power were all these modifications worth on our 327? Let's find out. Before we could upgrade our 327 small block, obviously we had to have a starting point. So we started off with what's known as an L76 327, which is basically the legendary 365 horse 327, which is itself was the carbureted version of the fuel injected 327, which was rated at 375 horsepower. So if you want to get a full update on this motor, take a look at the other video. I'll put it up right here. It's a comparison between the DZ302, this L76 327, and the 1970 LT1 350, all these legendary small block motors. So these are kind of pretty cool. But this was our L76. So it was a 365 horse 327. It was rated by GM at that power output. And the 327 uh, was actually the highest rated power output small block that they ever offered. Although whether it actually made that power, like in the 375 horse fuel injected version, whether it actually made that power <laughs> and, and the, that it was rated as a different thing. But this was our starting point. So basically this was a 11 to 1. 327 short block and it had dome pistons in it to produce that static compression ratio with a 64 cc chamber it had the legendary fuely heads on it it had a dual plane gm high rise intake they ran it with a 780 holly we ran it with a 750 holly we ran it with long tube headers and it also had the duntoff uh 3030 or the duntoff um solid lifter camshaft in it so run in this manner with inch and three quarter long tube headers and our 750 holly this 327 produced 355 horsepower and 366 foot pounds of torque so it's important to note that this is basically if you have a 327 first of all not many people are going to have this a, either a replica or the original 365 horse 327 as a starting point you probably will have something that's more like a flat top piston you might have the fuely heads on it you might have the small valve versions you probably have a milder hydraulic flat tappet cam like for instance the l uh, l79 the hydraulic canned version of this motor or even a lower compression version a, a 10 to 1 or a 9 to 1 version but whatever you're starting with you can still end up kind of where we're going to going to go to so this was kind of our starting point but one of the first modifications we did to this 327 and we're going to kind of go up in steps here was we installed a more modern camshaft and sure the duntoff cam gets kind of <laughs> you know people love it and it has legendary status obviously but you know the cam was designed a long time ago so there are much more modern versions so the first thing we did was put a solid camshaft in this thing and i'll go ahead and give you the specs on this camshaft it was a solid lifter camshaft it was an extreme energy cam and it was an extreme energy 274 and basically it was a low 500 lifts it was a 236 242 degree duration um, it was a good upgrade, as we can see here from the Duntoff cam. The power output jumped to 370 horsepower, and torque was up as well. As you can see, power was up basically everywhere with this camshaft, from 3,000 all the way out to 7,000 RPM. Peak torque checked in at 380 foot-pounds of torque. But now that we've taken a look at, our, as a, at a simple cam upgrade, uh, we retain this camshaft, but now let's upgrade the rest of the components because basically here we have a good camshaft, we have a decent intake manifold, we have more than enough carburetor for this power output. But one of the things that's holding this combination back, in fact, if you take a look at that legendary where we the legendary video where we compare the 302, the 327, and the 350, the thing that they all have in common are the fuely heads. 
and actually it's kind of the fuely heads that are holding back this combination. We'll see what happens when we do a cylinder head upgrade on this because we've got some pretty big power. Uh, got a nice gains from this 327 by changing both the cylinder heads and in this case the induction system on this thing. So let's check that out. After running our stock L76, the 365 horse 327, which by the way, <laughs> did not make 365 horsepower, it made 355 horsepower. And I think that we did everything that we could to get it to make that power output. I mean, we even ran it with long tube headers. It had no accessories on it. It had an electric water pump. It had a good carburetor. We dialed in the tune. We optimized the timing. So I think in this case, the 365 horse 327 um, was probably a little overrated by the factory. It might have been more marketing than anything else. Uh, I can say that when we ran the fuel injection on this combination, because basically the fuel injected motor just had a different induction system on it. It had the same camshaft and cylinder heads and everything. The fuel injection does make more power than the carburetor does. But guys had so many problems and we had issues with tuning the thing as well. So unless it was spot on, <laughs> it was hard to get them to work. But we uh, installed our camshaft and that pushed the power up quite a bit going to the comp extreme energy solid roller cam, made 370 horsepower and 380 foot pounds of torque. But we didn't stop there. What we did then was <clears throat> we wanted to replace the what I think are restrictive cylinder heads on this combination. The fuel heads, although they're legendary back in the day, let's face it, they're they're nothing compared to a set of any aftermarket head or even a late model Vortec I, I head, I think for that matter. We replaced these with a set of airflow research heads. At, when we did this, we also replaced the intake manifold. Now the factory dual plane high rise is actually a fairly good piece, but what we installed was a dual plane high rise from the guys at uh, Pro Comp or Speedmaster. And here's what happened when we upgraded the cylinder head. We put an airflow research, and they call it an L98 head. It's an aluminum head, you know, obviously CNC ported. It's a really good <laughs> head and a solid upgrade. So the combination of the cylinder head upgrade and the intake manifold, we ran the same 750 carburetor on this thing, same long tube headers and everything. All we did was upgrade the heads and intake manifold. That pushed power up quite a bit to 441 horsepower. So <clears throat> we jumped from 370 horsepower to 440 horsepower. The nice thing is it's always good to get good like, you know, top end gains and peak horsepower stuff. But if you take a look at this, we also picked up power basically everywhere in the curve. The peak torque was over 400 foot pounds to 408 foot pounds. And the nice thing that torque was up also even down as low as 3000 RPM. So not only did we pick up peak horsepower and peak torque, but we picked up power everywhere through the entire curve, which again, as much as I like peak gains, having more power everywhere, it means the thing is gonna be drivable, more drivable. It's gonna have better acceleration because the only thing better than more peak power is more average power because when you step on the gas, you want everything to be more. <laughs> but we weren't done here. So after running this thing with a dual plane intake, we thought this thing's running all the way out to 7,000 RPM, even though the peak power occurs at 6,600 RPM, that's still fairly high. So we thought that this thing might benefit from a single plane intake to replace the dual plane. Now for most street applications, a dual plane is kind of the way to go because it offers good average power, especially a dual plane with a divider cut out in the middle. Um, that tends to work fairly well. But we thought, hey, we have it on the dyno. Let's find out. This thing's revving out, out to 7,000 RPM. So let's find out what a single plane actually does. So we install the single plane high rise from professional products. And as you can see here in red, the single plane manifold, this motor responded very well to the high RPM power basically offered by the single plane. Peak power was up to 462 horsepower, and it was making peak power a little bit higher out at 6,800 RPM, although the, the power was the same at 68 and 6,900 RPM, and it carried all the way to 7,000. So if you were gonna rev this thing out past that, because um, you would, you know, if you're shifting the thing, you wanna rev it past the power peak and then stay in a good average power production area, this single plane would definitely be the way to go. There was obviously a, a trade in power in this single, typical single plane, dual plane. In this case, the crossover point was 5,000 RPM. So the dual plane made more torque than the single plane, up to 5,000. And then the single plane did better from there on out. But when we think about it from our starting point of 355 horsepower, 
We're now at 462, so we had gained 110 horsepower by changing the camshaft, the cylinder head, and the intake manifold, keeping the short block the same. I mean, it's important to note that we did have a really good short block to start out with. It was an 11 to 1 327. But although we did this on a 327, which is kind of cool, it makes it kind of the other guy's small block, because the 327 is not nearly as common anymore as a 350. Um, this can be applied to any motor. You could apply the same thing to a DZ302 if you had one of those, a 283, although the small bore is definitely going to hurt you, but definitely a 350 or a 383 or a 400. Anything, any small block is going to respond to these kind of upgrades, but it just goes to show you there are lots of guys, especially the guys that were growing up in the 60s, because this 327 was very popular in the mid 60s and stuff. The 327 was very popular because it was a big upgrade, a big step up in power compared to the 283. Obviously, eventually that was replaced with the 350, which was even bigger, uh, but the 327 was cool, and obviously from these results, can make lots of power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think about the upgrades on our 327, our 365 horse 327? I mean, we added more than 100 horsepower, and the cool thing is these mods don't just apply to a 327. In fact, they apply really to any of the big bore motors like the DZ302, the 350, and even the larger bore 400. All of these modifications will wake up all of these motors. So what I want to know in the comments, please let me know, what is your favorite factory small block? Is it the DZ302? Is it the 365 or 375 horse 327? Is it an LT1 350 or is it the even bigger 400 inch small block? Let me know in the comments what your favorite is. But you know, when we're having a conversation about what the favorite small block is, all the 327 guys have the last word. And the reason that they have that is they have the highest power rated factory small block ever produced. That fuel injected motor was rated at 375 horsepower and that's higher than any other factory gen one small block. And when we have a conversation, they always get the last word. Yeah, all you 302 and 350 and even 400 guys, you guys all make less power. All right, Richard Holder guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff and I will keep testing.